Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only, Steve Harvey. (laughs) Got a radio show. Man, oh man, oh man. You know what, y'all? I mean, really, the goodness of God is overwhelming if you think about it. I mean, really, really think about it. Even when your circumstance doesn't look so bright, even when you're going through something that's causing you discomfort, pain, even in that, God's goodness is actually overwhelming. Because don't forget why you're going through this moment. First of all, this too shall pass. But also, secondly, remember, man, ain't everything else that you've gone through that seemed so insurmountable at the time, didn't you get past that too? I mean, it's amazing if you really think about it. You don't get stuck on any one issue your whole life. The only people that get stuck on an issue their whole life is people who won't let it go. That's really all it is. There are people who exist, and you may be one of them. Oh, please know I've been guilty of it myself before. But I learned something. There are things in my past that I just would not let go of. It it was done. It was over with. I was past it. But I, I would not let go of it. It was over. The the dude that did it to me didn't exist no more. The problem that it created didn't exist no more. The only problem that kept hanging on was I would not let it go. And man, you can't go forward if you're going to keep looking in the past. It's an impossible thing. It's like driving a car. If you keep looking only in the rearview mirror while you're driving, you're going to crash pretty soon. And a lot of people just keep crashing over and over and over and over because you won't drive your car. You keep looking in the rearview mirror at the past. Oh, woe is me. Oh, you know, they did me like that. You know, I ain't been the same since he cheated on me. Oh, man, ever since she stole my money, I ain't been the same. Man, she played me, and ever since that, I done treated women differently. You may have some deeper stuff going on, like, but eventually, guess what? Do you understand that when you have a relationship God, with God, you can take that to him, too, and drop it off and leave it there? Do you know that he can fix and heal that? Maybe it's something serious like that that you need fixing or healing from. A relationship with God can fix and heal that. But man, 
Come on, y'all, whatever it is. And I'm not trying to downplay it or make it act like it wasn't traumatic in your life because, oh, God, you don't want to, you know, you don't want nobody to do that to you because you want to be the, the, you know, the um, poster child for misery. So please don't let me take that from you. If that's your position, that's your Hall of Fame card you hanging on to. I'm the poster child for misery. Oh, no one is more woe than me. Then oh, please don't let Steve try to take that from you. You go ahead and hang on to that. But let me tell you something, though. If that's what you're going to hang on to, that's what you're going to always be, the poster child for misery. At one point in time, you're going to have to get on and move past it. You Sometimes, man, it's merely a simple thing of taking it to God and leaving it there. You know, some people don't have money for therapy. Some people don't even know who to call for therapy. God is the best psychologist in the world. He can fix it for you. There is nothing too hard for God. You know, when something seems impossible, y'all, God does the impossible all the time, every day. You want to know how I know? I just look at a couple basic things. Do you know that that sun comes up every day in the morning? It comes up in the east and it sets in the west. You can't do nothing about that. Or you can you can wish because you planted your flowers on a certain side of your house. You can wish all you want that maybe one day he would bring it up out the northwest so those flowers would bloom. No, no, it's going to come up out the east. And once the sun hits the horizon, when you look in the water, like if you're ever out in L.A. and you see the sun going down, once the sun, once you can visually see the sun touching the horizon, you have three minutes. You have exactly three minutes. You can sit there with your watch. You can time. You have three minutes, and it's gone. Three minutes, is gone. I read that somewhere, and then I went and tried it. It's gone. Every day, if, if it's clear enough, not cloudy, once the sun touches the horizon on water, you got three minutes. When the wind blows, you can't do nothing about it. He can bring it from the northeast. He can bring it from the west. He can bring it from the south. He can bring it hard. He can bring it cool. He can bring it hot. It's certain things that God do. God does the impossible all the time. How those stars sitting up there? How how can you find these constellations? The Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, Orion the Hunter. Oh, that's God. That's God. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You can't reach them stars. You can't shoot at them. You can't move them out the way. Orion the Hunter's belt is going to beat them three stars at an angle. You can, you can, you can call it what you want to call it. It's still, that's what it is. See, he does the impossible all the time. He created heaven and earth. You're saying that God can't get you through your past. Somebody did this to me. It's the worst thing. I had the worst childhood of anybody. God can't get you past that. He can move heaven, mountains, earth. He can form the Grand Canyon. He can make the water come over Niagara Falls 24-7. He can't fix your little bitty past, yours. It's amazing how people make their problems bigger than God. Somebody told me one time, stop telling God how big your problems are and start telling your problems how big God is. And go on with your life. Quit driving your car looking in the rearview mirror. Ain't nothing back there but your past. And if it was hurtful or painful or something you just felt like you can't get over, Take your problems to God and leave them there. You hear the old spiritual, all you've heard it. Take your burdens to the Lord, leave them there. You hear it all the time. But you think that applies to everyone but you? Come on, man. There are a lot of people out there going through much worse than you have and have overcome it all. Why won't you take the step to overcome your past so you can get on with driving your car and see where God trying to take you? But it's a trick of the enemy. The enemy tricks you from seeing your future by having you constantly looking in your past. Man, it's a trick of the devil. If the devil just let you quit, if he would just let you get to driving your car and look out into your future, your future shows hopefulness. You, you have hope when you see the future. But he can keep you in misery if he keep you looking at your miserable past. God looking for you, man. God would love to hear from you. Let's spend some time talking to God today. Hey, God, what's happening? It's me. I know I ain't talked to you in a while, but man, I feel bad about that, but I need you. He know that. Everybody should say that prayer all the time. It's cool. All right.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, it's morning time. Steve Harvey Morning Show is alive and upon us. I'm awful glad to be here today. I'm glad you joined us this morning. We got a good one for you today, so ain't no need to mess around. Let's just get it on, Marvin Gaye. Shirley mm. Strawberry. Hey, good morning, Steve. Let's do the right thing. Spike Lee, call us red. Let's do it then. All right, hump day Wednesday morning. Pull up to the bumper, baby. <laughs> Drive it in between. Grace Jones. What's up, Junior? Good morning, Unc. I heard that song twice. Ain't no woman like the one I got. Mm. Nephew Tommy. Ain't Old no Thomas. woman like That's the right. one I got. Yeah, you can't say <laughs> dog. It's just I can try, though. Try. Come on. I know it's good. Nice up. <laughs> nice up. How All right, how's everybody doing What's today? Good, What's happening, man? Good. Good, good. 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 Let's try a little Say what now? Yeah, I said one more. Yes. Mm-hmm. One Thank more you. time is all I got. I said one more. One more damn time. If you ask for another, you lost your mind. I ain't got but one more damn time. That's just the song. He just, just made that up just like that. Perfect. Oh, man. That's, that ain't no song. Right extraordinary. Dude, y'all got, you know, one hey, man, you don't know many. Roscoe Wallace wrote so many hits. Any. You know, man, Roscoe Wallace, I talked to him the other day, man. He asked why he hadn't been on the show, and I told him, listen, Carl, I hate you. So, you know. <laughs> With a passion. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, you ain't going to be able to come on, dog. Carl, I hate you real bad. He said he didn't understand that hate, you know, but I told him. I said, ah, he can come on thing. tomorrow. You want him to come on tomorrow? Oh, you can come on tomorrow. I don't know, man. I just asked him. I talked to him. I let him know, and then I'll call Okay, him. chop it up with him. Let, let me know. Let me know. A couple of people been asking wild. about coming on the show. Roscoe was upset he hadn't been on. Pimpin want to know how come he can't do the NBA playoffs. I told Pimpin because it was too hot outside. You know, all the <laughs> fur coats and stuff. You know, we, you know, we didn't want to lose it. I told Pimpin myself, Carla. Yeah. I said, yeah. oh, all, good. Them, all them fur coats and coats made out of lunch meat and all this, you be wearing. Yeah. You know, wearing and all your them, mask. You know, all them spoil ass clothes. Oh, uh, he know all his mask is mink. Did Lady Gaga <laughs> get her mink dress idea from Pimpin's? No, she but did. she got that meat dress from him. That's what I'm saying. Did she get it from, yeah. from Pimpin? Yeah. Because he had a jacket made out of bologna one time. <laughs> yeah. So she wasn't original with it. She wasn't. Uh-uh. Bologna. And he even oh. had it made out with the red ribbon strips on it. Wow. The real bologna. Oh. Where she got that. Yeah. Fresh out Good the eating. Pack. That's old. You just get hungry. You just eat your jacket. <laughs> yeah. Junior, Junior Pimpin wants to know when he can come in on sports with you. Oh, you know what? We can do it, Pimpin. We can do that tomorrow. All right, I'll talk to him about yeah, it. Yeah, we talk to him. Okay. He's killing All right, me. you don't know until you ask. All right, coming up at 32 <laughs> minutes after the hour, we'll uh, ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, social justice leader, Until Freedom co-founder, civil rights activist, and author, Tamika D. Mallory will be our special guest. Uh, that's at the top of the hour. We cannot wait to talk to her. Mm. But right now, mm. yeah, yes. right now, she's got a brand new book out and everything. Um, it's time to start the show off with Ask the CLO. Steve Harvey is our chief love officer. This one is from Melanie in Canada. Melanie writes, I'm 37 years old and I'm dating a 40-year-old man that I met online. We've been together for a few months and we're both over the dating BS and ready to get married. Because of that, he's brutally honest to the point where it's offensive to me. For example, on our first date, he said my breath was stinky. He said my cooking needs work and he's told me I'm a terrible driver. I know he's got to truly like me because if he didn't, he would tell me. Is this an acceptable way to get to know someone or not? Yeah, it don't sound like he like you to me. Uh, at all. I don't know where you mm. got all this love from. 
Your breath right. stink, you can't cook, and your ass, he don't like your drive. Wow. That's the beginning. <laughs> and as you get married, that list Dad. gonna grow. I'm just here to tell you. Yeah, so if cool. I were you, this old we in love, I would, you know, we, we're over the dating game. It's only been how long, Shirley? Oh, they've Some only months. dated a few months. Yeah, just a few this, months. You, lady, you don't even know this man. Right. A right. few months mm-hmm. is not enough time. Now, he's brutally honest. What's mm-hmm. what's behind that brutal honesty? Ooh. What what Ooh. what else is brutal? I don't like. Brutal. Yeah, I don't like. Mm. You know. So if I were you, I would spend a little bit more time getting to know this man. Cause if he this quick to be this harsh with you, wait mm. till something's wrong. He's yeah. mean. I don't. It don't sound like she have it though. Yeah. yeah. You shut <laughs> up. Like it's, it's that was off. just their first date. Yeah. <laughs> he only said it one time, according to her. Tierra in Culver City, California says, "I'm in my mid thirties and I've been with a great guy for a few months. I'm into polyamory and uh, my best friend and I are lovers too, but my man doesn't know it yet." She got me into the lifestyle, and now I basically recruit guys for her pleasure and mine. For the first time in a long time, I have a guy that I really like. Should I introduce him to my lifestyle and have sex with him and my best friend, or should I keep this one all to myself? What? I can't advise you on this foolishness. I've never seen this work out for anybody. (laughs) I, I, I haven't. Now, it may, but I haven't seen it work out for anybody. Somebody gonna want what they want and they ain't gonna want the other person to know it or have it. That's yep. always the case. Yep. So look, why you just go on and do your thing? You ain't finna have nobody all to your damn self. Cause you ain't all you on you don't right. see if you wanna be somebody somebody, then somebody gotta be your somebody. But everybody can't be everybody's everybody. <laughs> Wait, one more time. Yeah, okay. If you want to be somebody, yeah. somebody, uh-huh. then somebody going to want to be your somebody. But uh-huh. everybody can't be everybody's everybody. Because that's what the hell going on right yeah, here. they're just doing everybody. <laughs> you know, you can't belong to everybody and just them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because somebody ain't going to go along with the rules. I thought we was doing everybody. Now, if your girlfriend didn't introduce you to it and you with her, but you want him, but you don't want him to be with her, uh, that ain't how this work. Because Polly right. going to want a cracker. Yes, Polly going to want Yeah. I don't know what all Polly am or who or whatever. Well, Polly going to want a cracker after a while. Yeah. Everybody, about, everything. I thought you were saying Polly okay. and somebody named Marie. All right. <laughs> all right, here we go. We're moving on. Uh, Celestia in Austin, Austin, Texas says, I'm 31 years old dating a 39-year-old guy that can't get his mother out of his love life. Whenever he invites me to a family function, his mother invites his ex-girlfriend. His ex still hangs with his mother like they're best friends. His mom even had a 40th birthday dinner for this girl at her house and blamed me when my ex didn't come to the party. My man said that his mom is deliberately doing things to irritate me, so why does he allow this? Good question. Well, I mean, what can he disallow? He can't make his mama stop talking to his ex-girlfriend because his mama messy. Very. He can't tell his mama, you can't have this girl over your house no more. And and he can tell his mama, mom, don't throw her no parties. But but her mama don't like the new girlfriend. She wants the old girlfriend to win. And the old girlfriend is fine rubbing it in your face. If he ain't going to make it convenient for you, why are you making it convenient for him? He getting what you what he want. He got you and his mama cool, but you ain't got nothing you want. You don't even have all of him. She mad at you because you didn't let him come to her birthday party. Right. What? And he's not a great guy if he doesn't stop this foolishness. <laughs> all right, we're moving on. Uh, Isabel in Clearwater, Florida writes, My husband had an affair a year ago that resulted in a child that I have to raise. The child's mother was sent to jail for selling marijuana, and she came to me, apologized for the affair, and asked me to take her baby. I don't have any kids, and this child looks so much like my husband that it makes me ill. He's doing everything he can to work things out with me, but I'm ready to leave. She's ready to leave, um... This is... 
And she says she wants to take the baby with her, Steve. But he says she can't take the baby with her and she doesn't want to stay. So wh what does she do now? Well, you have no rights to the baby, I don't think, unless the mother signed the rights over to you. She asked you, but that's the father. So right. the father and the mother have the rights. Who is right. this woman he was sleeping with there smoking weed and selling it? And her ass is going to jail. Yeah, and now you, is... but the but the baby make you look sick, make you sick because he looked just like her. But now you want to leave him, but you want to keep the baby. So you want to take the thing that make you sick every time you look at it with you. What's wrong with you? It makes no oh. sense, does it? Damn, <laughs> give that man the baby and go start your life over. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, CLO. Coming up next, the nephew and run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, social justice until freedom. Co-founder, civil rights activist, and author Tamika D. Mallory will be our special guest. But right now, Nephew Tommy is here with Run That Prank Back. What you got for us, Neff? As you know, yesterday <laughs> I played this prank. We're going to run it back again. Stolen car. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a uh, Trevor, please. Okay, yeah, that's me. Sir, you purchased a uh, 2001 Navy Blue from um, a used car lot dealership called uh, Car Lot. I don't know, maybe six or seven months ago, am I right? Right, it was six months ago. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, you've been paying notes on this car, I know, for the last six months. Right, and, right. you know, I, I hate to be a, a burden of bad news. Actually, my name is uh, Detective Justin, and I'm giving you a call to let you know that the actual vehicle, this 2001 oh. Navy Blue sh that you purchased, is actually uh, a, a stolen vehicle. And we've actually been looking for this car for the last, uh, been pretty much close to a year now, maybe a little over a year we've been looking for this. I work in the uh, auto theft division. and. Okay, well, uh, hold on. Hold on. Who you say you are again? Detective Justin, sir. And I'm in the uh, auto theft division here at the police department. Auto theft? Ain't nothing stolen. What? Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I think you got the wrong. I think you got the wrong guy, man. Because um, my car, my car's legit. Uh, well, no, sir. It's, it's 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 and I've done the trace on on it, and I know this is probably uh, a shock to you. But it, you, we're we're right on point with this thing. He's got a 2001 navy blue. Right, you did buy right. it. You did buy it at the, the car lot dealership, and that. Right. Uh, and it's the exact one on the license plate, sir. They do match up, and uh, I know this is a bit of a shock to you, but your car is actually a stolen car. So the dealership, sir, actually sold you a stolen car, and I know you did not know that. I know that it was not any information that you already knew. And I know you thought that you were just purchasing a legitimate car, yeah. but you have a stolen car, uh, Mr. Trevor. And yeah. uh, no, man, no, I think you got the wrong person because this this car is not stolen for real. Man, this is not stolen, sir. I can go all day with you and try to make you understand what's going on here, and I know it's probably some some blurry information that's not clear to you. But at the end yeah. of the day, your car is stolen. I am going to have to either get someone to come out and impound it. Or oh. you no, no. I, I think y'all might need to go back over y'all records, man, because I think y'all um, on the real. I think y'all got the wrong person. This, it can't Sir, be all right. for real. I'm going to tell you once, and I'm going to tell you again. You have a car that's stolen that I have to have in my possession by the end of the day. Man, now, you ain't getting by the end of the day for real, man. You got, Hold sir. On. You you have a stolen car. And you're going to need to bring that car into the police station so we can get this thing rectified. Man, I don't man, know. I don't bring shit in, man. For real, man. Hold on. Let me call the about this, man. Because I don't know about all this you're telling me. For real. Sir, I understand what you're saying, but do you realize you're talking to a police officer here? I no, am you're... Detective. I am Detective Justin. I am. I don't know oh, who you are, man. I'm going to call this. Hold on. Is no longer, sir. <laughs> We've had to actually shut them down for the time being until we get a, quite a few cars rectified. That I've got more than just your vehicle, sir. That's been that that has auto theft tied to it. 
Hold on. There's two things. Either you're going to bring it to me or I'm going to come get it. Now, which Man, one do you want to do? To you ain't coming to get for real. Sir, I don't Hold want on. to have this to have to get go to a level of where it doesn't need to be. But I need to get that car in my possession. Okay, look, look, look. Listen to what I'm telling you. Okay, are you listening? I'm listening, sir. Okay, look. Unless somebody gonna pay me my three hundred and seventy seven dollars and fifty two cents I've been paying for the last six months. Unless you gonna pay me that, plus give me back my that I trade in to get this Man, I ain't trying to hear what you talking about, for real. Now this is a you coming at me with, man. I work too hard to be keeping up these notes right here, man. I got that and my rent to take care of, and you come to talk about you finna take my car because something that happened before I bought it, which I don't even know if this is true. Like I said, I think you missed, I think you got me mixed up with somebody else. Why the f- y'all just now coming at me talking this? F- I ain't heard nothing about this before. Sir, it's taken us a while to actually track down the car and actually find out exactly where it was. I've I've I've, I've tracked this car so for the last eight nine months, and I've finally found it. You are the one that's actually has it in your possession. It happens all the time. It's an unlikely situation, but I got to get you to bring it in. And I'm, I'm, I'm I ain't I'm, bringing shit in. You hear me? I ain't bringing shit in. Y'all not coming to get shit from me unless somebody give me my three hundred and seventy seven dollars fifty two cents. I've been paying for the last six months. Plus, get my back. Sir, I'm sure you're probably long gone by now. It's, it's, it's probably. What? That don't Sir, give I'm me sh- something. Okay, then. Then y'all can at least just come with the money. Come with the money. I'll just go get another ride from somewhere else. Sir, I'm not, I can't sit here and negotiate with you. I'm just a detective that's on this actual case. And I know it's a trying situation, but I am going to have to send some officers out there that, that do this type of thing. They pick up these cars and bring them into the... I wish you would send somebody out here to come get my car. And if you can't negotiate with me, you need to find somebody who can. No, I, yeah. You bring somebody out here if you want to. Don't bring somebody out here. I got something for hell. I've been working too hard, man. I'm working a great shit. And then I'm putting in the overtime. It's got to stay late. So that, man, I'm, I'm working too hard to try to get this car, man. So bring out here if you want to, for real. Sir. Huh? Sir, sir, calm. I, I, I got to get you to calm down. I mean, you're Man, getting a little you out. You can't calm me down after you and told me my, my car is stolen and y'all talking about coming to get it from me? Sir, I, I, I know this is a surprise, and I understand that, and you got a great, you got an honest living, an honest job, and I understand that, but some people have done some dishonest things, and that's what's happened here. Somebody's done that some. That's my fault. That ain't my problem right there. That ain't but, my but, problem. Everything was legit with my answer when I first got it. So why is it a problem now? I'm not understanding that. All I'm saying is, if y'all come with my car, I'm going to y'all up. That's all I'm saying. You know what? I don't want to go any further. Can I say one more thing to you? Can I do that? What? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your cousin, <laughs> <Wait>. Eric. <laughs> uh, who did you just say this was? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning man, Show. What's you tripping, man? What's up, man? <laughs> you got pranked by your cousin, <laughs> man. Trevor, you all right? Man, hold on, hold on. Man, I got me even need a cigarette around this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Let me ask you something. You got to tell me, baby. What's the baddest radio show in the land? Man, y'all crazy, man. It's that Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> See, that's how you get somebody pressure. You understand no, what I'm that's saying? That's how you get your no, you did wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that's what... Good. Orlando, the nephew will be there tomorrow. Tomorrow, nephew is coming. Yes, I will be there tomorrow. Thursday night is the show that I added. Got a few tickets left. Get them, get them, get them. While the getting is good, the nephew is coming to Orlando. Tampa land in the cut. Sold out. <laughs> that boy back. That boy back. All right, thank you, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, Tamika D. Mallory, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, everybody. Uh, listen, as promised, we got our special guest. Uh, This sister's trailblazing activist uh, for social uh, justice. Uh, She's been at the forefront of nationwide social justice movements uh, over the last year, and more than that, actually, but we've really seen her in the forefront of late. You've seen her about in every news outlet uh, in the fight for justice. She's a co-founder of the Until Freedom Organization and uh, the Historic Women's March, and she's also an author now. Uh, Her new book is called State of Emergency, 
how we win in the country we built and examines the challenges that we face and the forces we must overcome. So we're going to find out more about this state of emergency. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm introducing to you one of the bad, bad young soldiers out on the front line today that I appreciate so much for all these young lions that's roaring out here that's making the difference on the social scene. And ladies and gentlemen, she's here. Uh, Please welcome activist Tamika Mallory. Hello. Thank y'all so much for having me. It feels like family. So thanks for allowing me to be on. How you doing? This is really going to be good. Yeah. You know, let me tell you this. This this speech you gave uh, at a Minnesota press conference uh, that was following the death of uh, George Floyd, it uh, has been referred to uh, in a lot of circles as the speech of a generation. And over the past year, you've been heavily involved on the front lines of so many social justice movement. What has this been like for you this past year or so? You, you know, um, Steve, un- unfortunately, it's not just been this past year, right? I've been right. in this fight for 25 years. In fact, the first time that I met you uh, was while working with Reverend Al Sharpton. Um, and it's been just that long that we have been in sort of a perpetual state of addressing uh, violence and, um, and, and police violence. And so uh, for me, George Floyd is sort of like this big moment that I assume other leaders have experienced. I assume that Dr. King and others, mm-hmm. who I, of course, am not comparing myself to, but for right. the sake of conversation, I'm sure there were moments that really shifted um, at least right. public understanding, uh, bringing more people to the movement, allowing you an opportunity to have more resources and, and really more depth and, and more people to join in the fight. And I think that's what this year has signified. And it wasn't just George Floyd. Uh, Breonna Taylor's mother, Tamika Palmer, would say that it took George Floyd to be killed on camera for there to be attention to mm-hmm. her own, her daughter um, and mm-hmm. the fact that she was killed right. because, you know, it had been right. two and a half months and no one was really talking about Breonna Taylor. So she was mm-hmm. sort of sandwiched between Ahmaud Arbery and, um, and George wow. Floyd. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like this trio took place at one time during a pandemic that people just couldn't ignore. Um, and so the last year has looked like still fighting, but having more people to the left and right of us who are willing to help uh, along the way. Yeah, you know, and I don't want people to misunderstand what we're saying in this intro. I'm talking about this last year because it's been in the forefront of people's minds Mm -hmm. a lot because of the pandemic, and everybody was home to bear witness to it. But this young sister been out here a long time fighting. Mm -hmm. You know, it just Mm -hmm. takes... These are the moments she's talking about. You know, the march on Washington for Dr. King, uh, the, 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 the trash collectors march in Memphis. Mm-hmm. These were things that were helping to find and get him to the point. And this is this moment she's at. Now, Tamika, you've got this book out now. And the book is called State of Emergency. And it takes a look at the history of systemic racism and activism in America. Now, and you in this book, you lay out a vision for effective activism and positive change. Tell us more about the book. So State of Emergency, uh, in many ways, is like a, it's a labor of love and pain, right? It was an mm. opportunity for me to uh, sit down and write what I said during that speech in Minneapolis um, and to really give more context to it. You know, I talked about in that speech the uh, fact that Uh, We learned violence from America. And, you know, I talked Mm -hmm. about the long-standing conditions of oppression and white supremacy. And so this book gives me an opportunity, rather than zooming my whole life away, because that's what was happening right after the speech. I was sitting in front of my computer for hours trying to do every interview, trying to speak at everything, um, which Mm -hmm. was impossible. Um, and um, and I decided to sit down and write this book and also to refresh my understanding of the history, um, to to cre- to put um, uh, references in the book so that people, because I'm not saying anything new, Steve and family. Right, you know, right. I'm, I'm repeating with my own secret sauce, if you will, uh, the same history that we've been telling for far too long. And this book has a few important points in it. I think one that is extremely important to me 
is that um, I dedicated the book to my son, uh, someone who I have left for many years. He's 22. And for many years, I've been leaving him to work on other people's children's situations and haven't necessarily been there in his state of emergency at times. Um, and so I dedicated the book to him with a with a whole conversation on how we can run to other movements, but if we don't deal with the issues that are happening within our lives, within our families, we're missing the mark. And it was really there to help white folks understand that a lot of them want to get involved, but they don't understand that they're bringing some of the same harm that has not been addressed in their families, their mother. Uh, it, it uh, speaks about Mexican people uh, in a right. certain way. Or their fathers don't like black folks. And you want to come and get in the movement and lead what we're doing. But you haven't challenged them and said, listen, I won't be at Thanksgiving dinner if this is the way the conversation around the table will happen. Hey, Tamika, hang on right here. Uh, we're going to be back with more Tamika Mallory right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, everybody, we're back. And our special guest this morning is the author of the new hot book that we all got to get. It's called State of Emergency. This is uh, Tamika D. Mallory, uh, who's our special guest this morning. Mm. I mean, you know, look, we've been dealing with this for so many years. I mm. talked about that personal, um, taking the personal responsibility in the book. And then, you know, my forward um, is a conversation between Cardi B and Dr. Angela Davis. A lot of folks went crazy. Mm. How, why Cardi B, <laughs> racial justice, how can you, you know, what, what does that mean? But I wrote this book in a way that a mother and her teenage son could read it together. I wrote it mm. for a pastor and the janitor at the church to be able to come away from this book and have a conversation. I wanted the stripper and the dude who's on the street corner to take this book and say, oh, I see myself in this. And perhaps I can have a conversation with um, someone from a different community and it might be enlightening. And so... Um, you know, that's what State of Emergency is about. It's, it's a book that all of us own. And it's really a, not just a, a book, but it's a movement. And the movement uh, and the steps towards fighting for justice are included in the text. You know, this is, this is great because to me, we're doing a new take on a very, very old problem. Yeah. I thank God for social media because this wouldn't even be happening at this rate if it wasn't for phone cameras. I've watched this happen to friends of mine and black men I've known for years because I'm 64. I've seen mm. it before there was phone crime, before it was phones. I've seen them beat them. Like you were talking about, you have to heal within yourself. And you're absolutely correct. I do appreciate the non-African Americans who have decided to get in in this Black Lives Matter movement because it, it will help. But it also, like you say, you have to deal with the stuff at home. Because mm. you bring with you a lot of the old things that's just been in place for yeah. so long. But you also mention in here that there's a conversation that must take place between black men and black women in order to rise mm. together. What is the conversation basically that you think should be had between us amongst ourselves? I think there has to be an acknowledgement that we've got some issues. Um, that's that's one. Nice. There are some people who want to uh, sort of look past it and say that, well, it's the media or, you know, women out here trying to act like they better than the men or, you know, women bashing our brothers. But we're not really understanding that the issues that we face were designed and it's something that we've carried uh, since we were enslaved and we've never, mm. ever been able to tear those things down and rebuild new relationships. Come on, girl. Right. I think oh, there are girl. so many, there's so many that want us um, to forget one another, to leave one another behind because they know that together we are too powerful. Hey, uh, Tamika, hang on one second, one second. We're going to take another break. We're coming back. We got so much to talk about. This is really good. Uh, this sister's on point. We'll be back with more from Tamika uh, Maori right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, everybody, uh, we're back. And our special guest this morning is Tamika D. Maori. Uh, she's the author of a brand new book. She's a co-founder of the Until Freedom Organization. And the new book is called uh, State of Emergency. And it's a, it takes a look at the history of systemic racism in America. Look, y'all, we need to run this book up. Everybody need to get this book right here. 
if the black man um, as the head of our household, because that's what I believe in. And that's not going to change for me because the world definitely is changing. And there are many women who have had to figure out how to do it on their own. But I believe that the black man is the head of our household. But that as my father would say, who's been married to my mother for 50 years, he say I'm the head of the household, but it's whatever she said. That's what I do. I don't fight with my, yeah. you know, he don't fight yeah. with my mother at all. Facts. About yeah. anything. And, <laughs> and as a result of that, they, are, they have raised the family. Um, and, and even if it is not a man and woman in the household together, it doesn't mean that we need to be tearing one another down that we have to disrespect one another and that we need these divisive tactics, tactics that exist within us um, where our communities are not whole. And so I think that as we, not before, but as we work to fight the outside forces, we have to figure out what can unify us and what can bring Black families together stronger so that we are we are um, in a position to go to war against the world and not in the process of fighting with each other on, on the way. You know, uh, this is an interesting take. That part. And, you know, yeah. right I, I want people to really understand that even though this woman has been at this for a while, you know, it's it's amazing how these types of moments kind of bring years of work to the forefront. And that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at something that happened with Aubrey and, and Breonna Taylor and George Floyd that really pushed this work to the forefront. And this is one of those pivotal moments. This book, uh, State of Emergency, it, it's, it's, it's about talking about us because I don't you know like you say we have issues within ourselves you know with the the one issue that I've always thought that we needed to fix was just our black men look man we just have to start with just a basic respect of our sisters mm. we, we, we we have to start here we, we, we got to get more protective of our women and and how we talk to them and treat them and, you know, I mean, uh, look, I'm not blaming any one genre or anything like that, but we got to stop the degrading of our women in our music. We got to put an end to that. I mean, we got some smart cats out here in the, in the music genre, and they giants, and they got, the, mm-hmm. they got enough money. They could easily put a stop to it. You know, the music is, you know, Bruno Mars and the Anderson Pack, they coming out, they, they bringing some flavor back to music that's been missing for a while. But we got to start in a couple of places that we can control immediately that don't take a whole lot. It's mm-hmm. just us older men who know have to have a sit down with the generation behind us and tell them who are now the moguls of hip hop. And say, listen, brothers, we, we got we got to squeeze this. And these young cats that's in hip hop, they brilliant dudes. They smart. They get it. They know how to do this. And we can start there. That would help start healing a lot of it. And because once we start loving and taking care of one another, I think we have a better shot at this thing. But this racism thing, though. Mm. The, <laughs> you know what, Tamika? To me, the reason this thing has gone on this long. Mm-hmm. Is because there's so many powerful whites that have to keep it going. Because Absolutely. like you just said a minute ago, we are so powerful. If we ever were given all the rights we would do, if we were ever given justice like it was flavor instead of slices of pie. See, they, they think if you give us too big a piece that that shortens their pie. No, no, we ain't asking for a bigger slice. We're asking for to eat off the same spoon your ass eating off of. Mm-hmm. What you taste, we want to taste. That's what justice is. But they know that if they give us that, what we become in spite of all the obstacles is enormous right. within itself. So imagine if they level the playing field. Who the right. hell finna do that? Right. Hey, Tamika, one more time. This is really good information. Hang on. We got more with Tamika Mowry right after this, y'all. Don't go what? This is a bad girl. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Uh, we're back. Uh, special guest this morning is Tamika D. Mowry. Uh, we're going over her new book. Her new book out is called State of Emergency, everybody. If over 18,000 copies have been uh, sold already, we finna sell another 18,000 today. So let's get out and get a copy of uh, State of Emergency. It's everywhere. And Steve, I think also it's profitable to have people at the bottom, right? Ah. It's 
profitable mm. to have people um, mass incarcerated, right? Mm -hmm. You need right. incarceration to continue because imagine the, the trade, if you will, that is being done that is being done not just through bodies moving from prison to prison and, and employees um, being able to make livings off of these individuals, but there's also products and services that are being ran out of prison. So there right. is an actual Business. market. How do you how do you keep the drug market as it currently is if you don't have people to use it? And then you mm. need to be able to lock them up. And you mm. need to have them in certain situations that help to keep the rich rich and the poor mm. poor. And mm. I and so I don't think I think it is a failure of many of our people to assume that this just kind of happened and it's some project that we've got to unravel. I think it's very simple. It's very easy. We understand it. And look at how hard the Senate, the Senate Republicans are fighting to not pass a bill, the George Floyd Justice and Police Act, which is right. not, which is, by the way, not radical. I just want you to know yeah. that the bill is moderate in nature. Um, mm -hmm. There is something called the Breathe Act that the Movement for Black lives has been advocating for it's much more radical um, but right now what's on the table is the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act and look how hard they are fighting not to have accountability measures um, uh, for officers and in the system so there is an actual strategy and I think where we as black people fail is that we spend so much time having smoke for one another I don't like Tamika this person I don't like like that let me you know I yep. this one ain't that and that one it doesn't speak well and so and so shoes ain't right and we got all this smoke to fight each other but when it comes to standing up mm. against the beast that we're going up against yeah where are we we don't have oh. any more energy because we've been fighting each other, fighting each no, other exactly right mm -hmm. you know <laughs> let me just say this this george floyd bill listen y'all this is a real simple basic human rights Bill. All we're saying is, can black people be treated the same way white people is treated when we get pulled over by the police? Can the police be held accountable for the same laws they are paid to uphold? If I kill an unarmed man, my black ass going to jail. Yeah. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. evening, as soon as they come to the house, so what makes it okay for you to kill an unarmed man and then nothing happened? We're just talking about a basic human right here. And she's absolutely correct. This is it. But they're fighting it. They're mm -hmm. fighting it like we asking for something unreasonable. These are basic damn human rights. And we live in a country that don't want black people to even have basic human rights. Mm. Just, we we don't see why y'all not okay with not being treated the same way we are. Y'all ain't like us. So okay. why y'all tripping? Look, this better than we used to treat. Y'all ain't slaves. So we just doing this. That's all this is. Give us time to work through this. We tired of all this monkey ass mess. We're exhausted. She's exhausted. exhausted. She's exhausted from writing the book about a state of emergency. She's exhausted from raising her son. I'm exhausted from telling my three boys how to drive, where to keep your registration, how to act when they still over. Man, where you at? Well, call me, man. Let me know you good. My son's grown, but I worry about yeah. it. We are tired, y'all. The book that she has out now, y'all. Listen, everybody, here's the deal. We are going to do something for this book, the Steve Harvey Nation. We're going to push this thing over the top. Yes. This woman right here who is dedicated so much of her time and her life Amazing. to the cause, it's time for us to return some of this. Let's get this book and push it so high up the New York Times list that it makes noise where people have to pay attention to it, where all the major outlets will want to talk to her. Because this is a smart woman right here. And I'm, I'm proud of her. I'm, I'm glad she's taking up this thing. The book is called State of Emergency. 
It's everywhere. I want you all to go online. I want you to download it. But I want you all to look for this book. It's called State of Emergency. And let's give this sister some support and some love. And let's learn from the book some of the points and facets that she knows, obviously, so much about that can help us move this thing along. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate y'all so very much. You guys are family, uh, always been supportive. You know, people don't believe a book like this can sell. And in the first week, we sold 18,000 copies. That's a huge movement. Um, But of course, it's not enough. Um, We need to sell many, many more books in order to make it, uh, you know, the the type of book that lasts forever. So, um, again, it's not just my book. It's our book. These words and this movement is for each and every one of us. And I appreciate the support so much. Um, I'm going to continue to do the work. I'm actually on my way today to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to stand with the family of Ronald Green. Um, you know, we saw what happened to Ronald Green. And yet again, we have another man crying out, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, help me. Um, I can't sit at home with that. I have to be out here. And, um, you know, this book hopefully gives other people a way to get out there and to be a part of the movement as well. Absolutely. And that's what it's going to do. Everybody, the book is called State of Emergency. It's by Tamika D. Mallory. Thank you so much for joining us today, sister. Thank you. you. have our continued support. Anytime you need a voice to get a message out, uh, Steve Harvey Morning Show is your home. You can call Thank us you. and we will deliver any message. If you ain't got time, I'll do it for you. I'm sitting behind the mic. My ass is mad all the damn time. Yeah, we know. I, I listen to you. Stay pissed off. As I'm, I'm, soon as you hang up, I'm finna cuss. So don't even worry about it. We got you. Thank you, sister. Bye-bye. Yeah, I thank you. Yeah, so uh, that was Tamika Maori. Uh, Tamika Maori. She's really outstanding, man. I just, yeah. you know, she's she's been at this for a while. She looks super young. So, you know, most she's people yeah. think. Because when I first met her, and yeah. I, I talk with her. Uh, I uh-huh. thought she was like in her twenties, yeah. but I think in late twenties right now. You know, but when you 20s. hear her, that's yeah. a grown woman. Yeah. That's that's that's, woman. that's some conversation that yeah. only happens when you've been living, some right? Life, uh-huh. right. you know. Yes, some all life, that. life experience. So that's good, you know. Yeah, but it's really good her. to have young people uh, taking up this mm-hmm. fight because you know the Al Sharptons that's been out here for a while. And, people like that but when you see these young people man it's very very important because somebody got to be 40 you know Martin Luther King when he died he was 38 man that you was know, brilliance too you know man you you got to have your Sean Kings and your uh, Tamika Maris and, and, and these people you got to have them you well let me cannot. ask you something you said something about sitting down with, with these rap moguls and having a conversation with them. Do you think they would be open to that? Absolutely. That conversation? Absolutely, man. They're really intelligent cats, man, especially the cats in power. See, you got to understand, I'm 64, so the generation behind me was Jay-Z now. Uh, mm-hmm. Jay-Z, LL, you know, the Snoop, these mm-hmm. cats that's... Dr. Dre. DMCs. Mm-hmm. Getting up close to that 50 range. That's the generation. Q, these cats you can talk to because they get it now, you know. All right, thank you. Wow, what a powerful, powerful moment with Miss Tamika D. Mallory. Um, coming up next, it is the Strawberry Letter, the subject he thinks it's way better than it is. We'll get into mm. it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, sex, work, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter. Here it is, live on the air. You never know. This letter might be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Subject, he thinks it's way better than it is. Dear Stephen Shirley, (laughs) I've been dating a great man for almost two years, and before the pandemic, I moved in with him. He had high hopes of having sex more frequently, but just the opposite of that happened. I'm 28 years old, and he's the only man that I've had sex with in my life. I agreed to move in with him because we're at each other's house every night anyway, but I do want to marry this man, so I know that playing house with him could spoil everything. 
There is also another reason uh, I won't have sex with him whenever he wants to. It's because he's not as good as he thinks he is in bed. I was a virgin when we met, and we had sex for the first time after we'd been dating for four months. I expected an extraordinary experience, but it was mediocre at best. Uh, I had nothing to compare it to except the R-rated movies I'd seen and what my older sister told me about sex. Since I was a novice, I continued to date him, and then I fell in love with him. He's the perfect man for me, and I want our sex life to improve. I do it routinely because I know he, he's he got needs, and I don't want him to cheat on me. It's so mediocre that I've fallen asleep on him a few times while we were doing it, and he didn't even notice. Uh, recently I caught him watching porn and at first it made me uncomfortable, but then I realized he might learn a thing or two from the video. I sat and watched the video with him and asked him if he could do the same on the, if he could do some of the, the stuff the guy was doing. He very confidently told me that he's far more advanced than that porn star. And, uh, that's why I'm so in love with him. He's so clueless. Do I tell him he needs some work or settle for bad sex forever? Settle for bad sex forever and you're only 28 years old. If you marry this guy, that's not the kind of life you want. I, I really don't think that. I, I don't think you do. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't have written us this letter, okay? Uh, you're only 28 years old. He was your your first. Um <laughs> I, I do think you're way too worried about him and his needs than your own. You're saying he's he need, he has needs, so that's why you do it when you do. Uh, you can't be that in love with him to neglect what you want. And you don't stay with someone just because that's what they want, okay? You got to figure your own needs. I know you're young, but you got to start thinking about yourself sometimes. Uh, and th it can start right here since you're already with him. Please do not settle. You mentioned settle in your letter. Uh, do, do I tell him he needs some work, you ask? Well, of course you do. And you've told him that to do it, to, that you wanted the guy, you wanted him to do what the guy was doing to you. He didn't hear you, okay? His arrogance told him that he was so much better. Uh, I, I think you deserve a man uh, that will listen to you and not be so arrogant that he can't even hear you when you ask him to do to you what you want. Um, you're right in saying you have nothing to compare it to since you were a virgin before this guy, but you know something isn't right. You do know that. Um, you know, don't feel so badly about the extraordinary experience the first time. A lot of people say it wasn't all that the first time. It's not until they, you know, do it more and get into it more. Uh, I think the world is starting to open up now because of the vaccines and all of that. Uh, you were with him because of the pandemic. My advice to you would be to let him know that you're going to move back to your place because although you do love him, he doesn't listen, and this relationship is not going to work without good communication and great sex. And you're not getting either one of those right now. Steve? Little sister, you got a problem here. <laughs> you're dating this man for two years before the pandemic. I moved in with him because he had high hopes of having sex more frequently. But the opposite didn't happen. She 28 years old, and he is the only man that she done had sex with in her life. So you agreed to move in with him because y'all was at each other's house anyway. That's not a reason to move in with nobody. Shirley's right. You got to find other reasons to move in with somebody since y'all just over there every night anyway. Well, just do that. See, it's always good to be able to go home instead of find out your ass is home. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> it is always better to go home than to find out your ass is home. You're already home. Ignorant. You here. <laughs> Damn, you done took the out out your life. Yeah. You ain't got to go over there every night for that little side piece of sex he passing out. I have sex with him whenever he wants to. It's because he's not good as he thinks. And the reason y'all don't have sex is because he ain't as good as he thinks he is. It's because he's just not as good as he thinks he is in bed. Now, hit apart. I was a virgin when we met, and we had sex for the first time after we'd been dating for four months. I expected an extraordinary experience, but it was mediocre at best. I had nothing to compare it to. Now, hold up. I hadn't ever had Buffalo Burger before. 
But I know a badass buffalo burger when I'm eating it. Break it all the way down, Steve. <laughs> See, it don't matter if you ain't had experience before. You know what bad is. Yeah, you're cracking me up. I never had but <laughs> when I got hold to some bad fettuccine, I knew it was some badass fettuccine. Uh, right. I'm not an expert on Alfredo sauce. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what is this? Why are you making me But if I'm so tasting some nasty ass Alfredo sauce, I don't need nobody to tell me it's good ass Alfredo <laughs> sauce. You. This is a bad ass sauce right here. <laughs> All right, listen, hang on, Steve. We'll have part two. I know bad response. barbecue sauce when I taste it. <laughs> At 23 minutes after the hour, we'll be back with the strawberry letter. The subject is he thinks it's way better than it is. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is, he thinks it's way better than it is. Mm. A 28-year-old girl to move in with this man because they over each other's house every night anyway. She was a virgin until she started dating this man. He's the only man she'd have had sex with, and they've been having sex now for a minute. She was a virgin when she had sex and she was expecting something spectacular. It was nothing but mediocre. It has never improved beyond mediocre. It is considered still mediocre. Uh-huh. <laughs> he sitting up, she sitting up here talking about, I guess because it was a virgin, I didn't have nothing to compare it to. Don't let yourself off the hook like that. A lot of stuff I ain't had. But if I have it, I bet I know if it's bad or not. And had nothing, you ain't had nothing to compare it to except some X-rated movies I had seen with my older sister told you about sex. Now, since you a novice, you continued to date him, and then you fell in love with him. He the perfect man for you, and you want our sex life to improve. I do it routinely because I know he got needs, and I don't want him to cheat on me. But it's so damn mediocre. <laughs> now, hit a part. I have fallen asleep on him a few uh-huh. times while he was doing it, and he didn't notice. I, I, that, that, that is impossible to happen. It's no way in the hell that has ever happened to me. I, I ain't bragging, but I promise you that ain't happened. Are you? Hello? Are you? What? You sleep? How the hell you sleep with what I'm finna do? What? Wake up. Wake up. You be sleeping. What you about to do? How the hell you sleep and your ankle in my hand? How? How is you sleep? <laughs> Not the ankle. Uh, Y'all trying to figure out how you sleep. Yeah. It's too many things can happen in here. Now, he try, He ain't doing a damn thing if you done fell asleep. He's not doing a damn thing. And I tell you what a big problem is. It's a little problem. Uh, That's what's wrong. Because if you go into sleep and he on you and you sleep, because the big problem you got is really a little problem. And I don't know if you can fix that. Recently, I caught him watching porn. And at first it made me uncomfortable, but then I realized, wait a minute, he might learn a thing or two from the video. So I sat down and I watched the video with him. Mm-hmm. Then she asked him if he could do some of the stuff the guy was doing. He confidently told this girl he is far more advanced than the porn star, and that's why you in love with me. <laughs> what? <laughs> you better than a porn star. <laughs> Did you watch the movie? Is that what you thought you was doing? Because it ain't. <laughs> porn star. <laughs> they was up. <laughs> Thunderbolt. <laughs> Whip a snapper. <laughs> Whip a snapper. There's a porn star named Whip a Snapper. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm-mm. See, say the word, say the name slow. Whip uh-huh. a Snapper. Uh-huh. That's his porn star name. Mm-hmm. So now you think you whip a Snapper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when you ain't whipping no Snapper. Close now. You're getting close. Yes. Watch yourself. Your porn name going to be Needle. Thread the Needle. <laughs> St- 
ditch. We're going to give you a different name. See, listen, man, sister, you're going to have to have a conversation with him and say, look, I'm just going to have to tell you this. I've never been so damn disappointed in my life. So I'm, let me, let's do a small reenactment. Shirley, right, I want yeah. you to continually try to bridge the conversation with me, and I'm going to show you why she ain't getting nowhere with him. Just try to bridge the conversation. Okay. Well, um... Well, what, baby? <laughs> <laughs> well, Well... Um... <laughs> Yeah, that's how, that's how I have it. I have it looking like a whale up in here, boy. Go ahead. Huh? Well, yeah. Listen, I want to Yeah, yeah. You want, you, whoa, 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 whoa. You mean hell yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. You know what no. I be doing. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just woke up. <laughs> oh, I yeah. knock them out. <laughs> you know, I put, woo. <laughs> you know, that's what I do. You know, I know you just came to, because I knock them out. No, it yeah. was during. It, it was during. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you know, that's what happened. You know, like some some people, some fighters get knocked out during the round. Mm. Uh, you no. know, you know, you know, that first round TKO, that's what I call that. I call that first round TKO. No, that mm. wasn't. That TKO. Wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, you, Whoa. You, 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 you know, better let it go. You're watching a movie and it's let boring. It go. You, What's you know, boring? The movie? I saw that movie. That dude wasn't doing nothing. That's what I told you. I told you I'd do that all right there. You know, he's something like a whoop a snapper. <laughs> whoop a snapper ain't got nothing on me, boy. Big Jack Johnson that was up in here. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, on. please. Post I heard you begging. <laughs> I'll be back tonight. Post please, your comments please, on today's Strawberry Letter. Please, at please. Steve Harvey FM on Instagram. Hey, Junior Sports Talk is uh, coming up next right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, get ready. Junior is here with Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? All right, Shirley, don't forget, though, Dallas, Texas, I got to keep reminding you, June 5th is the Kira's Hope 5K Run and Fun Walk at the Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge in Dallas, Texas, man, right by downtown. I'm looking forward. That's about a week away. And, uh, man, it's going to mm-hmm. be a lot of fun games out there, food. Uh, you get vaccinated. So, you know, we're excited to have everybody. Uh, come on out, and uh, you can go to Kier's Hope. That's K I E R S dot Hope dot org. Kier's Hope. Hey, Junior. Org. I'm sorry, I had to mess it up. What up, T? Why y'all there doing that? You think Julio Jones will be there by then? By the end, dog, he <laughs> might be, man. Ain't no telling, man. But uh, <laughs> it's sports news, man. You know, it's been uh, about a year since uh, uh, George Floyd died yesterday, and it, I just want to say that the sports world has recommitted itself to ending social justice, which is big. Um, you know, they're, this season, they're going to have ways they're going to be honoring George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement and, the, and racial justice. But I don't know, do you think there's a lot more we could do? Oh, of course. Yeah. For our sports. You know, as far uh, as sports, I know oh, last, as far as sports, yeah, oh. as far as sports. You well, they're like, bringing as season, much you know, awareness as they can, right? Yeah, starting you know, with yeah, Colin. Uh, uh, professional yeah. athletes yeah. are really going in. In mm-hmm. the words of Laura Ingram, when she said to shut up and dribble, well, that yeah. ain't happening no yeah. more. Mm-hmm. So get somewhere That's and not sit really down. What they're doing no more. And I right. like that the that the athletes are more aware and they are doing. I mean, it was big for the NFL to even play the Negro national anthem before every game last year. That was big, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, just to be, was, you know that that was a huge step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So um, oh. they did release some statements, though. I do want to read the statement that they did. Read, um, the NBA did say, it "said One year ago, the killing of George Floyd advanced a global reckoning around the systematic racism and inspired a movement for social justice." Today and every day, members of the NBA family and United are stand united in working for change and the future that provides true equality. Uh, that came from the NBA Social Justice Coalition, and that was a statement they re- they released. So okay. they are committed. Yeah, you know, yeah, the uh, NBA, the WNBA, yeah, NBA, yeah, yeah, it, yeah the Jim. WNBA. You know they what I really think of being, Junior? How long this has that? been going on? Because it's been going back so far. Muhammad Ali. You know what happened to him. <laughs> know. You know, yeah. I mean, you you've read the history, you know, and and all of what happened he to him. He lost some years. He, yeah, yeah, some years. Yeah. Um, you know, and then Colin Kaepernick, and then now it's like, you know, this has got to stop. Hopefully, in our it lifetime, has to. but mm-hmm. it just has to. Hopefully, you know, in our lifetime. 
I would love to. And I'm just say we're glad yeah. that the, that the sports world has not forgotten that how serious this is, and Absolutely. that they don't, they oh, do no. want to be a part of, it and they're recommitting to it. So yeah. I, I, lo- I love platform. that. Yeah, yeah I do it affects too, them. It right. affects all yeah. of us. Yeah. Yes, it yes. does. All right, Junior, thank you. Coming up at the top of the hour, we're going to talk about the best week to have sex. Oh, mm, right after that. That's every week. What the hell are you talking week? about? Any, any day to end it with a Y. As <laughs> soon as we get off work. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time for some laughter here. And uh, this might just be for our listeners in certain parts of the country, like the Northeast or the Midwest, one of the best weeks of the year to have sex. That's what we're talking about. Because it's not too hot. It's not too cold. You can open the windows. You don't need the air conditioner. You don't need to have to worry about sweating too much. Some say as we get ready to kick off summer, it's going to be too hot for sex. Okay, so Who said the, that? the question to you guys, to you guys is, have you ever uh, had sex without the air conditioner? Is it ever yeah. too hot? And yeah. is it ever yeah. too hot to have sex? Uh-huh. Yeah, no. Yeah. Hell, I done been outside. What are you talking about? Uh-huh. Ain't no air out wing. there. Just wing. Uh-huh. No AC. I, done, I done been in a warehouse. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what happened? Places. Places you hot as hell in there. I done been in the car. <laughs> Just in the car. Off. But the, but the air I done made on. love in a foundry before. A foundry. Uh-huh. Ford Motor Company foundry. The so foundry. Make the cars? Yeah, it's hot in there. Okay. Where they make the cars, they make engine blocks. Uh-huh. <laughs> they pour hot yeah. steel into molds and run it through a furnace and then a cooling system. The whole foundry hot. No Get air it. conditioner. Get it. I her hair was yeah. sweated out, wasn't it? Hair. How about the hair. <laughs> Edge is gone. Yeah. Had a helmet on. <laughs> Had a helmet on. Y'all you got to have wait, a wait, safety wait. helmet. You can't walk around and plant. Oh. They act like they ain't been in no hot place, huh? They oh, look like I'm they ain't done football nothing. football helmet. Wrong. You always comfortable. Okay. That's what I was thinking, football helmet. I didn't like her. We ain't got to kiss or nothing. What are we talking about? In a helmet. You can have a face mask on if you want to. I've been in a hot-ass club and then made it happen. I don't know what y'all talking about. Hot. Where in the in club? The club? Where in the club? Like a joining wall, you know, a wall between the, where the party at, but on oh, the other boy, side. The of VIP, it. tell it, the VIP. Shut <laughs> up. Yeah. Know who the hell you was talking about some, uh, you know, a joining so wait, wall. People could wall. just see you in the VIP. No, nah, they couldn't booth? see. No, nah, the VIP see. section, like at the strip club. Yeah, that glass know, right that there. Is. That's a different kind of glass at the strip club. I don't know. Wow, wow. I've, I've okay. learned something. Too. You can see you out, but they can't really see. Yeah. In. Kind of like that interrogation room. You can see out, but they can't see. Oh. Oh. So okay. the question was, have you guys ever had sex without air conditioning? I yeah. guess the answer to that is yeah. yes. What? I didn't even know I didn't even know the air was off. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't here talking you about no to work. Was, we're not in here for room conditions. <laughs> so what happened? I mean, after okay, that you give us the, the projects. You keep the, the projects. Ain't no central windy. air in the projects. So what do you do? Mm. You keep the helmet on and you just go back to work when you're done? You go back to whatever you was doing. You can't take off. We is at lunch. (laughs) How long was your lunch break? 30 minutes. We got to get back out of (laughs) here. We got to build these trucks. (laughs) Y'all ain't never been nowhere different. (laughs) What do you mean different? We asked about the temperature. Yeah, yeah. In the oil pit. What? What? Steve, come on now. Down in the oil pit. That's 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 pretty that's greasy. Oily. That's, that's, that's a lot of oil. That's a lot going that's on. Oily. Well, you ain't, ain't no oil on you, nothing. Oh, okay. it was okay. just hot. Well, don't get mad at me. I'm. I mean, seriously. Yeah, yeah, but all this is oil pit downstairs, <laughs> furnace, heat, hell, projects. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm still <laughs> stuck in the helmet. Warehouse. You know the truth. What? I've been in an eighteen wheeler in the back. Hello. Okay, well, that... Uh, okay. Yeah. No, that's friends? hot. I didn't have no that's air conditioning in my 72 Chevy. <laughs> that's a junior set yeah. of car. Yeah, I yeah. set the car with it off, yeah. Just a yeah. little crack in the window. Just all the air we got in I've been here. down at Lake Erie. Uh-huh. <laughs> Outdoors. In the grass. In oh, okay. Mosquitoes well, how, how, and hot. How hot was it that day? Ooh, it was hot. 
<laughs> it was a heat wave <laughs> and humid. It was hot as All hell. Right. <laughs> Wasn't no wind blowing me down. I don't like water that thing. Why don't right, they well, participate? Thanks for sharing, guys. They're so um, bougie. <laughs> they bougie. They don't More of today's trending stories on the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In trending news from our home station in Atlanta, Magic 107.5, 97.5, Atlanta police are looking for a suspect who stole Akon's Range Rover from a gas station in Buckhead. Akon left the car running while filling up his gas tank at the Quick Trip uh, Market, the QT, when somebody stole his Range Rover. Um, officials use the vehicle's tracking device to find the car. Atlanta police are encouraging people not to leave their car running for a split second. Turn your car off and take your keys. Akon right? Rich. He just had a Meaning. rich moment. Akon yeah, Rich, he had a rich oh, moment. Y'all know good and hell well take your keys. Turn your car. Well, if you yeah, don't, turn please do lock it. Yeah. And don't leave any valuables in it if you want. Oh, it's away. something in the car even, now. It's some valuables in gas it. Gas anymore. You can't even. Yeah. Do that. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> it is Man. not a game. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what I pulled up to the other day that I hadn't seen in a long time and what, didn't know did not know it was happening, but I promise a you, full I service know. uh a full service driver station where you with, I oh. mean a, a gas station. Where they I pump your gas. I they have that those. in New Jersey. Boy, you rich for real. Tom Hanks, boy, you out here. No, I just ball. wandered up on this, Joey. Out there, out there me. by the chateau, they got all that, Joey. <laughs> 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 That's it. You're still going out there to Don't play your car but... running. <laughs> 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 you still going out there to play car with them, uh, golf with them, Steve? Play golf. Uh, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to set it up. He don't sound like he's going to be that old. <laughs> All right, more of the we Steve Harvey <laughs> Morning Show coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's time to start with Ask the CLO. Steve Harvey is our chief love officer. This one is from Melanie in Canada. Melanie writes, I'm 37 years old and I'm dating a 40-year-old man that I met online. We've been together for a few months and we're both over the dating BS and ready to get married. Because of that, he's brutally honest to the point where it's offensive to me. For example, on our first date, he said my breath was stinky, he Mm. said my cooking needs work, and he's told me I'm a terrible driver. I know he's got to truly like me because if he didn't, he would tell me. Is this an acceptable way to get to know someone or not? It don't sound like he like you to me. Uh, at all. I don't know where you mm-hmm. got all this love from. Your breath right. stink, you can't cook, and your ass, he don't <laughs> like your driving. That's the beginning. <laughs> of it. And as you get married, that list going to grow. I'm just here to tell you. Yeah, you so if cool. I were you, this old we in love, I would, you know, we, we're over the dating game. It's only been how long, Shirley? Oh, they've Some only months. dated a few months. Yeah, just a few this, months. You, lady, you don't even know this man. Right. A right. few months mm-hmm. is not enough time. Now he's brutally honest. What's mm-hmm. what's behind that brutal honesty? Ooh. What what Ooh. what else is brutal? I don't like brutal. Yeah. I don't like mm. that You know, word. so if I were you, I would spend a little bit more time getting to know this man cuz if he this quick to be this harsh with you, wait mm-hmm. till something's wrong. He's yeah. mean. I don't. It don't sound like she have it though. Yeah. yeah. You shut <laughs> up. Like <laughs> that was just their first date. Yeah. <laughs> he only said it one time, according to her. Tierra in Culver City, California says, "I'm in my mid thirties and I've been with a great guy for a few months. I'm into polyamory and uh, my best friend and I are lovers too, but my man doesn't know it yet." She got me into the lifestyle, and now I basically recruit guys for her pleasure and mine. For the first time in a long time, I have a guy that I really like. Should I introduce him to my lifestyle and have sex with him and my best friend, or should I keep this one all to myself? What? I can't advise you on this foolishness. I've never seen this work out for anybody. <laughs> I, I, I haven't. Now it may, but I haven't seen it work out for anybody. Mm-hmm. Somebody gonna want what they want, and they ain't gonna want the other person to know it or have it. That's yep. always the case. It's already happening. So yep. look, why you just go on and do your thing? You ain't finna have nobody all to your damn self. Cause you ain't all you on. You don't right. see. If you want to be somebody, somebody. 
then somebody got to be your somebody. But everybody can't be everybody's everybody. All right, we're coming back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. As a matter of fact, this is our last break of the day. Steve's closing remarks. You don't want to miss it. It's been a good day. We'll be back at 49 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, guys. Our last break of the day. Uh, I wanted to remind you... I wanted to remind you, the 2021 iHeartRadio Awards is this Thursday. Mark that down, May 27th at 8 p.m. on Fox. It's going to be live from the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles, hosted by Ursha, baby. That's right, Usher Usha. will be the host yeah, and performer. Yo. Yes, he will. Other performers include The Weeknd with special guest Ariana Grande. Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack will be there, Steve. You know, Silk Sonic, Doja Cat, Megan the stallion and more the night will also feature a special tribute to the one and only elton john john will be on honored with the 2021 icon award the 2021 icon award this is going down tomorrow night the 2021 iheart radio awards at 8 p.m eastern time on fox you do not want to yes. miss it all right I'm be watching I'm gonna tell you who they need to get this award to next year because Elton John is very deserved. Oh so yeah. So don't, yes. don't, don't, I ain't taking nothing away from Elton. That's a very important. Yes. They need to get this award to Stevie Wonder Man. Mm-hmm. Oh. Stevie okay. Wonder Man right. mm-hmm. has written some music over the years mm-hmm. yes. that I'm talking about is iconic. I was in my dressing room the other day and my son came in there and played these three words. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Sweet and simple. Yeah, yeah. These three words. Oh, did you snatch, snatch oh, your hand? Joy you... and cat. <laughs> Boy, that hold on to them notes. Yeah. Yeah. These three <laughs> words. <laughs> Oh, that song, man. I, I listened to it four times in a row. Yeah, Steven right. wrote some hits, man. He did. Yes. He, yes. Smash yes, it. Yes. And, yes, and I'm going to tell you something, man. He's if you ever songwriter. want, if you got a minute, just look up the lyrics to one of the greatest written love songs. As. 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 I knew hey, it. One S. <laughs> one S, not two. Okay. <laughs> Try it again. As. <laughs> Why do you like do this? First. As a sound, as around the sun, the earth knows she's revolving. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And the seasons yeah. know to bloom in early May. Mm-hmm. Just as kindness knows no shame, know through all your joy and pain, I'll be loving you always. <laughs> Such a music lover. Man, but you're right. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that song, so that's a living choice. legend. Yes, sir. Man, when you listen, I, they got to give this to Stevie, man. Stevie Wonder, man, has crossed every musical radio station. You couldn't, you couldn't. He been on every station. Mm-hmm. He been on every white station, black station. You couldn't. All formats. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ribbon in the sky. He done wrote uh-huh. some stuff, man. That's just. Yeah. I mean, that's just done crossed all lines, man. This dude, mm-hmm. and and that doggone album, Songs in the Key of Life. Oh, Lord mm-hmm. Jesus. Lord Jesus. My top five forever. <laughs> What's that album? Oh, they had me standing on the front line. Was that Inner Visions? Is that Inner Visions? I think so. Music Aquarium. Talking book. Maybe Talking. your baby done made some other plan. Yes. Keeping me worried. Say it again. Maybe your boy, that album, Talking Book, when he was on them rocks. Mm-hmm. Oh, this album. Every Ooh. album he's ever made. That album. Hotter than July. Yeah. Woo. Don't, 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 That's don't, what these three words. Don't, 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 Jungle Fever. 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 Jungle
<laughs> well, a whole There's band. somebody rode in their car by themselves. Yeah. I'm so right glad here. this is your show. I don't know anyone else who could do this. Uh, get away yeah, with whole this. Band, Steve. What the like, this though? I uh, know. Oh, that was the jam. <laughs> we know you. <laughs> you be jamming and doing the bring Calm down. <laughs> oh, you make the music on low. <laughs> oh, no, nothing. Make it. Nobody. Make. Boy. Boy. <laughs> Do 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 Come oh, well. <laughs> I would not do that to a dog, oh. Oh, baby. Uh, yeah. Boy. All Boy. I do, all I do. Oh. Oh. Chicago. Yeah. 12 do. noon. All I do <laughs> is think about you. Uh-huh. I mm-hmm. think about you, baby. <laughs> oh. What was that with the lips you just did? You're going to be all right. (laughs) 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 Only you can do that. Do that again. Yeah, so you got to have lips. You got to have lips to do that, man. I know know how to do it. I can control these things. Yeah, I can't See, these things don't just be flapping. Uh, uh, I can work these. It's a musical instrument on your face. Yeah, these lips right here, man, have done some things, man. They bought me out. (laughs) Bought me out, man. That damn Stevie Wonder. I'm out of here. I can can do Stevie Wonder hits. To the end, boy. The whole band, though. Yeah. Everything. I can do all the whole damn band. <laughs> Skeletons <laughs> in your closet. Oh yeah. Yes. That album, characters. Oh boy. Uh huh. Characters. God, so many. <sighs> yeah. Get up the hit. Well, thank you for that Stevie Wonder <laughs> musical <laughs> trip. <laughs> I was made to love her. Work them lips. Work them lips. Work them lips. Work them lips. Uh-huh. I yeah. played by myself. I ain't give a damn. I stayed in trouble, so I couldn't go outside like that. <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 